Hey guys, it has been a long day, but I swore I was not going to go to bed until I got this one last video done today because this came up in my memories today and it is absolutely a hysterical, lot of fun fundraiser. You thought that bad art one was fun? This was a hoot. Let me show you what I mean. This, this is our Waystation Dog Art Festival. And what we did, we got this blown up a little bit for you, is we got some uh, dog safe paint, which is soy based, I believe. Heather Robinson, who just did an incredible job on fundraising, set all this up. So she found this, this uh, dog safe paint, soy based. I found a bunch of 10 by 10 canvases, or I guess they're eight by 10 canvases uh, on sale somewhere. And I think it was like, they were a dollar each or something like that. And then we probably spent $30 on paint off Amazon. And we took some of our dogs and stuck their paws in paint and let them walk around. And this is some of the art that we got. Okay. This one was from Crocodile Bob. That's just one in big old Basset Boy footprint on a red background. Heather did the background and then Bob supplied the paw. This was Smokey Joe's. And these two were by Layla, which is a little July hound we had here. So we did that and you know, okay, that's kind of cool. But then we coupled those with pictures of the dogs. Here's Layla, little July hound. Smokey Joe and his like iconic, famous picture that we all know. And this is Crocodile Bob, who you may or may not remember, who's a big old basset boy about the same time. And then we gave him some cool names. Um, obviously, based on a favorite song of mine, Isolation. Cats and Chaos, Butterflies and Clown Trees. Now, I'm not entirely sure how I came up with those names, but I want you to look at these pictures again. This one on the left is uh, Butterflies and Clown Trees, and this is Cats and Chaos. And tell me that doesn't just really sort of capture it. She kind of scuffled around, and then these are her paw prints, and one of them may even be a nose print. I'm not even entirely sure. The final part to this is you got to find some smart ass to write the descriptions, just like the uh, fancy sort of stuff you'd see on a, on a museum wall next to a portrait that the next to a picture that sounds all dignified and artsy and stuff. Well, that's what this is. Complex themes distilled to essential truth is one of the hallmarks of a classic Layla. Contrasting to the lush exploration of color in her earlier work, Cats and Chaos, the seminal work in her crate period, entitled, entitled Simply Snacks, Layla lays out the theme for her later works, letting the simple images carry her profound questions. Pushing the boundaries of representational, rep, representational art, well, as much as you can push anything without thumbs, this artist dares to challenge our deepest conviction about the nature of reality. Now tell me this doesn't sound like something you'd see in an art museum somewhere. Why not butterflies and clown trees, she seems to say. Why not? The splash of monochromatic paw prints contrasting against the riotous clown trees hint at her ultimate theme, that a society that cannot accommodate clown trees is doomed by its own mass. The art makes it possible to absorb what cannot completely be reduced to words. Now tell me that's not just magic. So we did a bunch of these. We had like 30 of them. And uh, I can post this in Facebook for those of you who want to take a look at the words, because I just I just had a blast writing these. You have to find somebody with the right attitude to to name the pictures and uh, do the write ups. So um, and we put them up in auction and they went for, you know, oh, 50 to hundred dollars, most of them, because people knew the stories behind these dogs and they wanted to own a little part of 
what they had here at the way station. So Heather also arranged, uh, Heather was just brilliant. Heather arranged for them to be displayed at one of the local salons at a first Friday event. And we sold some there. They were up in a salon for everybody to look at, complete with the smart ass description. So if you've never tried a dog art fundraiser, some people do them. Um, notable, notably, um, Jay Kennedy down in Florida at the, the sanctuary, uh, they do them and then they have somebody who's talented fill in a little bit of the details. So a paw print turns into a, a flower on a stem. And that's certainly one way to go if you've got some talent like that. I have no talent like that, not, not personally. Um, and Heather really wanted to keep the, just the essential dog part of it. So that's what we did. And it was absolutely fun. We raised, you know, uh, I think three or $4,000 on it. And people have just really treasured um, their little piece of a way station residence. So if you're in the mood for a fun fundraiser and you've got some smart asses around who can name things and write stories, think about doing a dog art one. I know we'll try it again someday. For more information on raising money, please go to jdonate.com. See you there.